Hi guys, Andy here from Home Glow. Uh, I'm a plumber based in the Rotherham area, South Yorkshire, and today I've just done a small video on how to isolate a radiator if it uh, pops, starts to leak. So uh, it's a situation where the uh, panel of the radiator, the white panel of the radiator, on the middle, the ends, or wherever else, has corroded, and obviously you just water's going everywhere, and you just want to know how to isolate. So this is this is what the video is all about today. So it will save you a lot of money in the sense of not needing no carpet, no liner, anything like that. So it's not a repair, you'll still need a plumber once you've isolated it, but at least you'll know how to stop that radiator leaking. So let's get on with it and uh, I'll show you what to do. So what we need to do is isolate both sides of the radiator to stop water coming into that radiator to help um, stop that leak. So in theory, this is just a not what's called a normal lock shell valve, so it's not a thermostatic valve. So if you see it and it's got a head on it like this, they might look a bit different, but uh, exactly the same principle to try as what I'm going to show you now. First of all, what you can do is just turn the valve head and you'll feel like resistance underneath. To actually isolate a radiator valve, you would just spin that head to the right clockwise. So you just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning until it had come to a complete stop. In theory, that's what should happen, but sometimes what can happen is that head on the valve um, may be a lock shield um, type of valve rather than a wheel head. So what I mean by that is that head, even though you're spinning it, might not be doing anything at all to the stem that's underneath uh, this valve at all. So you're just spinning and spinning and spinning, but it's not actually isolating the radiator. So if that keeps happening, you're spinning it and it keeps on spinning, just take off the head. So it depends on what type of screw is on top, whether it's a posit or a flathead, just whatever, you need to get it off. Pull that off, then that would expose the stem underneath. This one's leaking a little bit actually, so we can sort that out as well. So all I'm using is a pair of adjustable spanner. Not a pair, just a just adjustable spanner, sorry. And I fetched some grips, but we shouldn't really need them, to be fair. Um, so how you would do that? is adjust that to work on the head of the uh, radiator valve, the stem. Turn it to the right. I mean, this one's turned off nice and easy. But for example, that for example that didn't work, this head. That's what we need to do. Boring process, but you just keep spinning. And spinning that head until eventually should stop so there you go so I've turned it all the way to the right and that now has come to a complete stop as you can see now I've disturbed that the cans tend to leak which is quite a normal thing no major so we can sort it just pull off this plastic collar Take that plastic collar off and it's leaking quite bad to be fair but all we do is you have a collar that's over over the top of that stem generally so we just tighten that up that generally would stop that leaking There we go, we've also cured the leak and isolated just the right hand side of the radiator. So now what we're going to do is move to the other side and do turn off the other valve. So now we've come to the left hand side of the radiator to find that this side is a thermostatic radiator valve. Which to be fair, it should be a lot easier to turn off then the lock shield but it might be a case you just have another lock shield it might be a case that you have two lock shield valves on the radiator no biggie you would just isolate it exactly the same as what we did the last lock shield valve so this one's slightly different thermostatic valve this one's on number five at the moment just simply turn it to zero and then that should now be isolated 
So you might find that there's water still coming out of the, the radiator, but what you'll find it's just the pr excess pressure that's left within the radiator forcing that water out, but it should stop pretty quick. But I will show you another little tip now, what you can do just to get rid of ex excess pressure and also make sure that the radiator is isolated. So we'll do that now. So this is something you can try uh, to see whether the, the radiator is now fully isolated and all we'd need to do is come to the uh, bleed valve on the end, end of the radiator. This one's on the right, might be on the left hand side. Uh, also, if you can't see any obvious signs, any bleed valve on your radiator, check the back part of the radiator as sometimes it can be located, located on the back side of there. So just simply open up the radiator uh, bleed valve. So you'll get a bit of water that comes out initially. Like I said, from the excess pressure, it goes all over the carpet. then it just comes to a stop light so. so that's when you would know this is just a little tip that's how you know you've got rid of the excess pressure out of the radiator turn that off again and then i think you'll find that the water leak will stop pretty quickly now so that's it guys thanks for watching um i hope this video will come in handy um well i hope you never get a leaky radiator in the first place like but so if you do get one hopefully this will come in handy and help you out of uh, get you out of a sticky situation. So again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe uh, if you like the video enough. Give us a like; that'd be lovely. So again, thanks you, and that's it. I've got a gun out because I've been giving me orders. Got to do it all real.